Hey guys, today we're going to have a look at weathering the Vindicare Assassin from our previous video. And to do this, we're going to be using the Dirty Down products to make it really quick and simple. So I've already done the video on the rust effect specifically, and that covered all the different things you can and can't do with it. In this video, I'm going to use that again, but I'm also going to use their Verdigree and Moss effect and give it some actual practical application to a model. One of the things that I didn't clarify in the last video was just how much you need to mix this paint. And yes, I said shake it, shake it, shake it, and I kind of beat that point home like a dead horse. But check the bottom of the pot, because if you're digging out crud and bits of bulked up pigment, then it means it hasn't mixed thoroughly. So get something in there, the back of a paintbrush will do, and break this away from the base of the container. So with the rust, when you apply it, you actually need to inspect the model and look at the parts of it that you think could be most rusted. So this has things like the base, which is connected to the floor. Well, the floor would pick up a lot of water and moisture and start to rust up the edges. Things like the actual plinth that the assassin st stood on, that would build up water as well, and you would get runs and drips from that. So any flat areas or any underhangs, I felt were the areas that needed rust. So applying this initially, I started with what I dubbed in the last video as Magic Mix, which I said was attributed to goblins on Instagram. It was actually created by a guy called Luke Mockeridge, and this is by taking Vallejo's Rust Wash and mixing it directly with the Dirty Down before you apply it. Now, me not paying full attention to my own previous notes, I actually didn't add any water, which is what you need in this mix in order for it to actually activate and start to turn orangey. So I ended up just putting this on thick and most of it stayed brown, that's on me. The great thing about this paint though is that at any point you can just add more water and as it started to dry the watery parts will actually reactivate the paint and then those bits will dry lighter and lighter. To get this right it actually took me several passes. Uh, I didn't need to wait for it all to dry, I just kept working on it until I was happy with how it was showing me it was going to end up. Essentially though the process is put it in heavy in one area, maybe mix in a bit of water, thin it out. That's the good thing with this stuff. If you unload the dirty down off your brush and just get a brush full of water, you can actually start to feather it out and create a blend on the edge. And the other thing I did was when I had some dirty down on my brush, I would also start to stipple it into areas that I'd already covered and I would stipple it out from the heavy rust to the light rust to the bare steel and at least then it kind of gave me a bit more of an interesting look as it began to dry. I think that's the main beauty of this stuff though, you've got a lot of working time so it is literally a case of put it on, wipe it off, put it on, wipe it off, put it on, wipe it off and eventually you'll get to a point where you feel happy and if you've completely ruined it you can just completely soak your brush so long as you haven't left it too long and then once you do that you can just wipe it all off and essentially start again for the most part. For the Verdigree I've never actually used this before but I've watched enough videos that I felt somewhat confident that I wasn't going to ruin a miniature that I feel like was well I feel like it's really well painted for me in the first place so going in with weathering can be quite daunting but in for a penny in for a pound so I literally just covered the entire surface with the verdigree effect with the intention of wiping it off afterwards so it would only stay in the recesses kind of like how you would apply an oil wash in a lot of cases or something like streaking grime it's when these paints dry though, that's when it gets really interesting because it's the, well, I suppose the best way to describe them is they're kind of like a reverse wash. What I mean by that is with a wash, you would normally apply it and where the paint's heavier or deeper, that would end up being darker. So when your wash runs into a recess, you get more paint in the recess and it gently feathers out until the actual color that you've applied it over. That's the whole point of a wash generally. But with this stuff, kind of the opposite happens when you apply it i would say keep it thin initially so don't think you can just gloop it on with it being you know the heavier parts get a heavier result what you actually want to do is apply it in thin layers but then even in that thin layer it's actually the thicker more central parts of it which end up drying lighter than the edges which dry darker hence the term reverse wash but if you go around the world looking at real verdigree or real rust, that's exactly what happens. Where you've had more water settling, that ends up being lighter because it's become more oxidized. 
But anyway, it was really awesome and simple to get the effect on this. I know a lot of people use things like nylac oxide, but that tends to have a very blue verdigris. I think for this bronze specifically, the green of it's really popped out and it gives a very natural and vibrant look. And it was just a case of putting it on and wiping it off for the most part. I did a bit more control with it by instead of using a makeup sponge, I also used a cotton board or Q-tip if you're in America. And this gave me a lot more control and again, gave me the opportunity to do things like feather out the edges. So I didn't have a big dark ring of green going straight to copper. Essentially, it would have given me that same coffee staining that you get with a wash. And that's what we want to avoid. Just a bit of moisture on a brush or a sponge and you can generally feather it in to the natural color beneath it quite easily and one of the parts i'm especially proud of is the tear in the statue's eye now i didn't intend for this it just so happened when i was wiping it off one of the places that had some verdigris remaining was right at the base of the eye and as i looked at that i thought oh that's not only natural looking because obviously the lower part of the eyes where the water would run but it's almost symbolic as though the sister herself is sad that she's had a head half shot off so I'm just doing this quick time lapse here to show the effect in action. And to be honest, this is somewhat different to the rust. First of all, it's a lot slower for it to react and the reaction is a lot more subtle. But like with the rust, if you want to increase the effect and make it end up dry lighter, then you can just add layers of water. So I ran some into all the recesses and even the flat surfaces. And then we got this second time lapse where, well, it's obviously had a bit more of an impact. But do me a favor, let me know, what did you like? Did you prefer the before or the after? Have we gone a bit too heavy on this one? I like the second result, but hey, that's me. What do you want to do? As for the moss, well, honestly, I kind of don't care. I mean, yeah, it does the same thing. It dries kind of mossy, it dries light green. Obviously on this base, I didn't have a large rocky surface area to cover, but I ended up using it as a fade from the dark weathered dirt land into the grass that I put on the final result. But honestly, if you're looking for a hobby product that does this, I think there's better ones out there. Something that actually gives you a 3D moss effect would be better in my opinion. And as for the color, well, I've been doing all this sort of stuff myself with AK washers. Yeah, it's two washers that I need to apply instead of just one, but I can't see me going and spending eight pound on a bottle of this just to have this in one effect. The other ones, however, are a lot more versatile with other practical uses, whereas this, again, it's kind of cool, but I don't love it. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe the subject wasn't right for me, but I'm just not loving this stuff. If you think this is the best of the three products, let me know. But to me, I feel like it's the weakest and I only really put it on the base for the sake of covering it in this video. Perhaps if I had something that I could actually use it on, like some larger rocks or surfaces, yeah, but Again, it, it just dries green and where the deeper pools of it are, it dries lighter green. That to me is almost the opposite of how I'd want moss to be. So I'd want it darker on the raised areas. Uh, sorry, I'd want it lighter on the raised areas and I'd want it darker in the recesses. So kind of like a normal wash, just with a lot more contrast than what a natural wash would give you. And that's why I'm saying I get that with the AK colors. So I can't see me using this again anytime soon. So yeah, three super awesome products and the bottles, I've got to be honest, they're somewhat expensive, but the good thing is this is an effect paint. You're not going to be coating the entire model of it. You just use a bit at a time and then work it in slowly and slowly. So one bottle should go a very long way. For those of you who watched my last video as well and want to know how I finished the model, well, it was a simple case of painting black around the room of the base. And to do this, I do, I use what I always use, which is Vallejo 950 black. Again, argue with me on this, please, but there is no better black for the rim of your base than Vallejo's 950 black from their model color range. To say this took me no time at all, I am absolutely, genuinely blown away by the result I've managed to achieve. In fact, I would argue, and I would almost safely say, this is the best model I have ever painted. When it comes to the results, yeah, I've not put much effort in. A lot of it's hobby cheating. This purely was a case of dry brush, a few little layer colors, and then these special effects paints. But to say I got this at the end of it, yeah, I like the result and I'm all about results. And this is the best result I've ever come out with. I think it looks real, it looks natural, and the model itself looks absolutely cool. And considering this is one of Games Workshop's few display pieces, I'm blown away with it.
but let me know what you think. After all, my painting guides in this channel is more dedicated to speed hacks and getting an army out quickly than anything else. So yes, I appreciate this isn't gold and demon quality, but that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for impressive results fast. So I need to do a huge shout out and thanks to our patrons. And I don't say this enough, but honestly, guys, I cannot thank you enough. It's your support that makes it makes it possible for me to do videos like this. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys. Thank you so much. And if you're not a patron already, feel free to consider signing up. I really appreciate it. Otherwise, you can support us with a like, comment, hit the notification bell, subscribe. All of that goes in a long way to getting us known and out there and helping us to help more people. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. That's all from me. Fohammer out.